Everyone, hi, Bruce Muffs and LCSW coming at you with another video from Sunridge on Nevada. Tonight, we are going to do a song that is especially powerful to us and what we're trying to always push is the relationship between a father and his children. Uh, you've heard me say this repeatedly over and over and over again, how important it is to have a father in your life growing up. Not just for boys, but for girls as well. Um, and we've gone over statistic after statistic. If you don't have a father in your life, you're more likely to go to prison. You're more likely to be sexually abused. You're more likely to be an alcoholic. More likely to do badly in school. More likely to get pregnant. More likely to be in juvenile detention. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. So right now, we're telling you, please, 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 in almost every kind of counseling that I do, I am always pushing, is the father around? Why not? Can the father come in here? Is he going to show up? Can he come in? Can I talk to him? Is there a man in the house? Is there a boyfriend, a stepdad? Does somebody care about these kids? Because what they see and how they endure it is going to affect them for the rest of their lives. I'm a product of that myself. I came from a dysfunctional childhood, rough relationship with my father. And unfortunately, I'm still picking out the shrapnel from all the scars that I had in my life, seeing my father really act not like a father. So I'm just pushing this over and over again, and you're gonna see me talk about this a lot. And when it comes to talking about fathers and being open about this, again, I'm push this, because it's, it's, if, if fathers were involved in people's lives, half the problems in America that we have with children today would literally disappear overnight. That's just reality. Okay, here we go. Dizzy Wright is the artist, okay, and he released an album in 2015, it was called The Growing Process, and in it, he talks about the relationship that he's having with his, at that time, three-year-old girl, her name is Zayden, all right, and talks about basically bringing her into the studio where he's performing and producing, and let's just get her to see what daddy does for a living. I can't stress how important that is, because so many times I say to kids, what's your father do for a living? I don't know. Does he work? Uh, what kind of work? Uh, and if they tell me what he does for a living, I'm like, well, what, is, what does that mean? He works in construction. That's kind of a vague term, you know, where he works in the city. Like, what does he do? Fathers that show an interest in their children and bring them part of their life, bring them and make them part of their life, have happier, well-adjusted children. It makes sense. Now, I want to share something also. In this song in 2015, he already had his daughter, she's three years old, he's bringing her into the studio. But he also did an earlier video, which I caught, called Letter to My Unborn Child in 2010, five years earlier, which I thought was very powerful to me because you see him kind of like thinking, what kind of father am I gonna turn out to be? And he actually has a scene in the, in the video where he walks out of his house with a pen and paper, he sits down, he starts to write a message to his daughter, and one of the lyrics is, he goes, I want to be a better father than the father that I had, basically. Wow, what insight. When I had my first kid, I was scared to death. I was really worried about the exact same thing that he was dealing with. Would I be a better father to my kid than my first kid, than, than, I was, than my father was to me? And he's talking about, like, you have family, you have uncles, I'm going to do right by you, I'm a hardworking guy. To giving her, giving the daughter, a, painting a picture of himself to let his daughter know, unborn daughter, you're in good hands. Daddy's going to be there for you. Daddy's active. It's a really, really good song. And it's called Letter to My Unborn Child. It came out five years earlier. By the way, local guy. So I want to call a shout out. I was looking at one of the videos that he was doing. That was Letter to My Unborn Child. There's a street that I believe is called Seaway Street, which I think is in North Las Vegas. I know that street. Um, I was in that neighborhood years ago doing some assessments. And then number two, in another video, he's crossing a bridge, which if I'm wrong, people let me know. But that's, I believe that bridge crosses Boulder Highway, and there's a Seagull Suites on one end, and a little further down is a casino. I think it's Boulder Station from Boulder Highway. And he's crossing that bridge with like five or six of his friends crossing it over. I may be wrong, but that's a bridge that I think, because guess what? I walked that bridge. So I know exactly where he's coming from. So what I want to do is this. I'm going to go over the lyrics. I'm doing it a little differently. Normally I kind of chop up the song, but I like what he said in two different paragraphs that I'm going to read the whole thing and kind of break it down in my own way and just kind of go straight into it. So here we go. Just, just follow along. 
And also, I want to kind of go over the vibe that he puts out with this song as well. The music is like a happy, warm kind of vibe. And it's the dad's voice is everywhere. It's kind of like surrounding her. And I think that was done on purpose. Like, it's not like, you know, you get a sense of like, I'm everywhere. I'm always going to look out for you, honey. I'm always, daddy's always going to be there. So when he's talking, like he kind of goes in and out. But you get the impression no matter where you are, daddy's watching you. I will always be there. And it feels like the lyrics almost like cascading like a waterfall. Like here to here to here to here. Letting her know in so many different ways, daddy truly loves you. That's my relationship with my daughter. So it goes like this. Um, he brings her into his world, talks about where daddy does his thing. Then he goes like this, verse one. I'm reading it in its entirety. You create your own glow. Oh my God, you do. Yeah, you create your own personality. But we can't force the grow. Meaning, I can't make you happy. You gotta make yourself happy. I can give you the tools, but you gotta find your own niche in life and what makes you successful. Don't care about what they think, baby. You got this under control. Don't. Have confidence in yourself. Don't listen to the haters and the boo birds and you can't do this, you're not supposed to. It's stupidity most of the time. This kind of, you take on life and I watch, growing up and I accept that. How you're gonna turn out as a young adult is gonna be up to you. I'm gonna give you the seeds and the tools, but you're gonna create your own identity. I have to accept that as a parent. Not every, you know, not every kid's gonna follow clockwork what you want. You'll be shocked at what they come up with. Support them, be encouraging. This kind of love don't stop. We need each other, but how can I stress that? There are some things in life that won't be right and won't add up. Yeah, we need each other. We need each other. I'm always gonna be here for you. I say the same thing to my own kids. There are some things in life that won't be right and won't add up. But don't try to be what they like. We all have bad days and bad luck. You're gonna have you're gonna have strife. I never worked with a family that was perfect, by the way. Every family had problems. Every kid had issues of one sort or another. And you have to learn that as a young person that you can't give up easily. You gotta strive forward and go forward. And even if you have adversity, work through it. Don't give up. Get off the canvas if you get knocked down because you will get knocked down. I've had, a, my kids have cried in front of me, my kids were embarrassed in front of me, and I, I always try to be supportive to them, because you're gonna go through that with your kids. It's just inevitable. Not gonna be like a smooth ride forever. It's not realistic. But don't forget, you can call on your old man. Don't forget you can call on your old man. I'm here, I tell that to my kids too. Till the day I die, I'm worried about you. And then after I'm dead, I'll be looking down, hopefully from heaven, looking down on you as well. Always gonna be concerned. Um, I'm here whenever you meet through hard times, everything's gonna be, all, gonna be all fine. Cause you got me and I got you, you always got my love. I've learned not to be so caustic, so sarcastic. What my kids want from me is unconditional love. Even when they do something really stupid and they really piss me off and they get me crazy, I gotta be the one in control. I gotta be calm, I gotta be a, a normal, I can't be a nut job. I'm explaining about nut job in a little bit when I finish the song. I have to be in control. And you think that your kids don't pick up on things at the age of two, wrong. They pick up everything. Gotta be in control. But loving you against the universe is what I wanna give to you. Yeah, sometimes it's you against them. That's okay, they need to feel that you, there's a support system always gonna be in place. And finally, everything I did for me, I built for you, I built for you. Man, great line, great line. When I die, um, I have nothing of personal possessions. I mean, I mean, honestly, about that. My clothing closet is a joke. It's probably one-tenth, one-fiftieth of my wife's closet. And I have nothing, I have no personal items I'm really obsessed about no hobbies, no collections. Everything is for my kids, everything. Everything I leave behind is for my kids to have a better life than the dopey one I had growing up. So I get that, he's saying I'm, everything I do for you when I'm in the studio, because after a while possessions become less and less relevant, it's what kind of life will your kids have and will they grow up to be PIMOS, productive members of society. Not parasites, 
but productive members of society. And I see so many kids that are amiss because they didn't have a father that really cared about them the way they were supposed to. So now I want to go into the hook. And there's a nice break off with the hook because it, the tone is pleasant and embracing. Dad is there. And it goes, if this world ever breaks you down, baby girl, stay strong. Remember that I got your back. You don't got to fight the world on your own because, man, there's nothing like a daddy-daughter relationship. You got allies. You got support. You know, I'm there for you. Come to me. I'm, I'm older than you. I've lived life longer than you. I'm smarter than you in certain areas. I know what to look for and what not to look for and how to guide you so you don't crash into the wall. So many kids that I've worked with over the years, they were hitting the wall at 80 miles an hour. My, my job, realistically, was let them hit the wall at 40 miles an hour. Still hit the wall. I'm only there like an hour or two a week. But start giving them some ammunition, some body armor, so when they hit the wall at 80, they're not going to go through the windshield. At 40, they can survive with a broken leg, maybe a couple of broken ribs. But at 80, you're not going to walk away from that. Like, understand what it means to grow up and be a man and at the same time be a woman and not be subjected to stupidity by idiots that don't really care about you. I love you endlessly. You got a friend in me. Yeah. Love you endlessly. You know, I love you forever and ever. You came for me. You're from my, my loins, so to speak. Man, there's nothing like a daddy-daughter relationship. Don't be afraid to talk to me. You can always call on me. Nothing like a daddy-daughter relationship. I love you endlessly. You got a friend in me. No, there's nothing like a daddy-daughter relationship. Don't be afraid to talk to me. You can always call on me. What's that line from Toy Story? You got a friend in me, you know? And you, you need friends. But really having a close relationship with your father and your mother is critical. I'm not knocking moms, of course. We, we've talked about moms and their role and how relevant they are. But having a solid dad is like having a number four hitter in your house at all times. Having a, a reliable running back. Having a guy that's going to score 25 points a night. You know you can count on dad. And in my house, the old expression, you know, I'm the big dog in the meat house. That's the truth. My presence is huge in my house. So great song, great song, great song. I want to say how this song kind of moved me is that I went on a family vacation a few days ago. It really was kind of like a one day or how it all worked out. My family wanted to go to the Grand Canyon. So I went to the Grand Canyon. I left Sunday night after work. It was like a five hour drive, blah, blah, blah. I was there all day on Monday, did a lot of hiking and saw some things. My wife made my wife and kids happy. And on Tuesday morning, we left before eight and we're back on the highway. Okay. It's a long trip. It's like four and a half, five hours each way between Vegas and the Grand Canyon, which is in Arizona. So I was in the car a lot. And, you know, you can only do so much listening to music and, you know, the next McDonald's, blah, blah, blah. They have a bathroom. So they were talking, my kids and my wife, and they would talk about, remember the time dad lost his mind and started screaming where dad was insane and broke that, where dad made that comment, where dad embarrassed me, where dad got lost. And it's like brutal. <laughs> it's like rough. And I'm like, how are they remembering these things? You think that was crazy? Well, I remember when dad went totally psycho. Dad went totally nuts on that ride. Where dad went totally crazy in the schoolyard. Where dad did this. Dad was a nut. Dad was a freak. And then my wife, of course, has to jump in with my kids, like supporting them. Like, you think dad's crazy now? I didn't know half the stuff about him before I got married to him. He lied. Liar. Liar. I'm like, what is it, gang up on dad day? You know? And... You know what? There were times I probably did things that were inappropriate, that were wrong. And the myth of like they're four or five years old, they're not going to remember wrong. Oh, they clearly remembered. Stuff I could barely remember, they remembered it crystal clear. Why am I bringing up the Grand Canyon? Because I saw a lot of kids there, you know, between like four to seven, holding their parents' hand as they're going walking, they're going somewhere, whatever it is. At that age, you see your parents as gods. Like, they can do no wrong. They're big. They're strong. They, you they tower over you. And 
I'm realizing like that moment for me to kind of do a do-over, it's, there ain't no do-over. It's over. There ain't no do-over. The do-over is over. The chance I had when I was holding those hands, and I held my kids' hands all the time, and think about my actions, how they were going to process it, they did process it. Now, thank God my kids, I think, are fairly okay. But I could, if I could, I look at, I'm looking at these parents holding their kids, and I want to say to all of them, white, black, brown, yellow, think about your actions, think what kind of role model you are. Because your kids that you think don't pick up on things, they pick up on everything. And I wish I could go back in time and do the Grand Canyon 15 years earlier and hold those hands again. And boy, I'd be a lot more clear on how to act when I got upset. Now, I can make an argument like I was justified and my kid ticked me off. I told him 20 times, don't hang on there. You're going to fall and hurt yourself. And then they fell and did hurt themselves and blah, blah, blah. I could say that and make an argument about that. But you know what? It's a weak argument. I'm the adult. I'm the father. I got to be the responsible one. This musician, this Dizzy Wright, impressed me. That he thought to say, write a letter before the kid is born and then bring him in, bring the daughter into the world and talk about her upcoming brother, Ziggy, and let her talk about it and give her a sense of empowerment. Like, you're going to be the big sister. He's going to look up to you. How you act, he's going to act. Already creating a brotherly bond, brotherly sister bond, which is so important, not distant. So that's the point I really wanted to see. You know, and I wish I can go back in time and giving them confidence in myself so I don't have to kind of like wins and have some regrets like, oh, if I said it, I said it, you know, hey, go along with it. Unfortunately, life's not like that. It goes by real quick. All right. So all I want to say is this. Be the right role model you want to be. And for those of you that are watching this, that will be watching it. Let us know if you came from a rough situation and how did you improve yourself as a parent? What did you learn not to do? And what are you doing now that's effective? Well, what kind of mistakes did you make early? And where are you now? I mean, I'm so much better at relating to my kids, particularly one kid that I had that drove me crazy. And I'm learning kind of like to back off, not be sarcastic, not be cynical. I gotta be there. I got to be the rock. I can't be like, you know, negative Nancy or just, you know, dopey comments. It doesn't help the situation. What can I do to just versus so many times I see this. So think about that. If you're in a situation where you've done things better now, will you learn from this video? Write us. Let us know. I want to hear your thoughts. Once again, Bruce Muffson, LCSW, Sunridge of Nevada. And as always, thank you for watching and, of course, for commenting. Have a good one.